we're back. Um, you're listening to Smidgen, and this is our cooking segment of this fun little podcast. You're in the cooking classroom of Red. We're in the cooking classroom of Red Stick Spice Company. I'm here with Sarah again. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> She's always game to come help me out with projects like this. So yes. this is really fun. So we just got done talking to clinical psychologist Leslie Todd, and she and I met at a cooking class here at Red Stick Spice. And she gave me just one of the biggest compliments, I think, of my career. She said, "What the space we've created here is so important to folks to um, get involved with some experiential learning that, where there's not a lot of pressure, like nobody's right. going to have a test, mm -hmm. it's not chopped, um, and get to know other people and get out and how important that is to mental health. So she and I took a really deep dive into... Um, cooking for others, cooking at home, but then also entertaining and inviting folks over and a little bit of the angst that some folks experience with doing that. So all of that to get to this dish, which is a great entertaining dish yes, that, um, and I know you've had it before because yeah. this was taught to me by my co-instructor, Lily. Right. Um, this is a recipe that she adapted from the cookbook, Jerusalem, oh, okay. um, which is a beautiful, uh, not completely vegetarian, but definitely plant forward book. Mm -hmm. Um, that makes use of all these really tangy, briny flavors that come from that part of the world. So this is a roasted cauliflower that we're doing with a lemon yogurt sauce. And we're going to make what um, the cookbook author calls a salsa. Um, I look at it more as a vinaigrette, but we're going to put some really interesting flavors together that's going to go on top of this. So let's start roasting the cauliflower first. Okay. So you were talking earlier about um, or maybe Kat, our producer Catherine was saying, don't cut the cauliflower, do the cauliflower when the camera's rolling because people need yes. to know this. Because yeah, when we made the recipe, we did it as flor florets. Right. Um, but your recipe calls for it to be a cauliflower steak, which I don't know how to cut that. So yes. I wanted to watch you and kind of learn how to cut it as more of a steak. Yes. So the first thing I want to do is get these leaves off of here, or most of them. Okay. And we're going to go through and find the core and cut it away from the core. And I am gonna cut it into steaks, but I am gonna cut it from there into smaller pieces, smaller okay. steaks. But the whole point of cutting it into steaks is to make sure you have lots of flat sides mm -hmm. because it's the flat sides and the connection of the flat side with the hot surface of the pan that's gonna get it to caramelize and you get all those beautiful brown crispies. Yes. So I wanna get in here and get this core out of here. So I'm going at an angle. There so it goes. There's some great cauliflower recipes, but they're kind of difficult to yeah. cut and it and, can get a little messy. And lots of people buying bags of riced cauliflower mm -hmm. and um, tackling a cauliflower is not that difficult. So I just want to get that core out of here. And look, this core, a lot of people are um, using it now, which it's absolutely edible. You can totally get that, um, puree that into a soup for sure. So, um, yeah, does not necessarily have to be discarded. So, thank you. So I'm just gonna start by cutting this guy in half, and then half again, and then here's where these steaks come in. So I could have left that big and cut bigger steaks, right, but I actually enough. want some smaller pieces and so that guy's going to go flat on our sheet pan and you see all these little pieces that are falling away you want all of that yeah because those are going to get really crispy um so but it's I'm more of almost like a something well because we're going to be dipping it in the sauce correct well i lay mine like out like a it's like a layered dip and then i okay. serve it with naan and then you get a big scoop of it and okay. put it on your naan um but so there's our steaks and then let's get this one cut in half So I've seen the cauliflower sticks where it looks like they cut the entire thing. Right. Um, and but that's not as like, you know, can't, you can't really eat that with your hands. And right. It's supposed to be, I think, more of a shareable dish. Correct. I want this to be something that's more scoopable and approachable when right. you walk up to this platter where lots of folks are standing alongside you right. trying to get some of that. Exactly. So let's get this on the sheet pan and then we're going to season it. Let me push all of this on the sheet pan and then you and I can arrange it. All right, so we definitely still want all those little bits. So let's, none of them overlapping, none of them on top of each other. And we're gonna season this with our Harissa olive oil and a blend called 
Zug. So this is a Yemeni blend, um, which I am absolutely definitely pronouncing incorrectly, <laughs> um, but a beautiful blend that's reminiscent of Zatar. Um, just big pieces of spices, and what's interesting to, about this one is there's dried cilantro okay. in here, which is, you don't see that a ton right. in cooking, dried cilantro, lots of fresh cilantro in right. the world, but not dried. Okay, so you're gonna go generously all over this. This harissa olive oil has those lovely, sweet harissa spices along with chili. So you're, you're gonna get cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, coriander, things like that in this oil, along with a, just a little bit of heat. That is, is that gorgeous, good? yes. I love that color. Yeah. So orange. we're gonna season this pretty generously with the zug, and then I'm gonna grab a it spatula. So Doesn't it smell wonderful? Yeah. So what are you getting first? Because I immediately get coriander. I wasn't gonna say that. Okay. But I don't. I, I'm trying to put my finger on it. I'm not as, as you know. My palate isn't as um, you know sophisticated. As but it before. smells. Does it smell spicy or savory? Savory. Okay. I think. And maybe but maybe it, it makes a little me think bit of like Greek food when I smell it. Really Greek. Yeah. Because I smell a little bit of a Mexican restaurant. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the coriander and a little bit of cumin in gotcha. there. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So get those moved all over. And then we're going in the oven with this. And we're going to roast these at a really high heat until they're very tender. We definitely want them uh, knife tender where you can easily pierce it with a knife, but we also definitely want to see some good caramelization going right. on with these. So I'm going to scoot right here and get these in the oven. And then we are going to move on to create the salsa or vinaigrette okay. um, that goes on top. So. What I'm gonna have you do, I need the zest of an entire lemon, okay. and then you're gonna need the juice of this lemon, and it's gonna be way easier to zest it before we cut it right, than exactly. afterwards. So have you ever zested a lemon? I would love to see how you do it, okay. just to make sure I'm doing it correctly. <laughs> so I hold the microplane, the zester, upside down with the fruit underneath it. So I do less of this mm -hmm. and more See, where, that's what I wanted you to show me, because I would have done it the other way. <laughs> so you can totally do this and you'll get there. Right. Um, where you move the fruit and you hold the zester still. But I do it the opposite because I don't want to grab the pith, the white of the lemon that's underneath the zest because it's a little bitter. Mm -hmm. And so that way I can look each time I pull the zester, I can look and make sure I haven't gone over a spot far, twice yeah. where you're definitely going into the pith. And I can also see the zest that's building up on the microplane. Like if I need a teaspoon, I can eyeball a teaspoon. Whereas if it were upside down, I would constantly be like tapping it off and trying to figure yeah. out what's going on. That makes sense. And um, this was a trick a, a fellow student taught me in culinary school. Okay. So I was I went to culinary school late in life. I was 40. I was taught this by an 18 year old, which okay. fine with me. Great tip. But yeah, <laughs> um, but we do need the zest of that entire lemon. Okay. So while you do that, I'm going to start this very important step where capers get sizzled in some hot oil um, and they're going to bloom and they're going to brown and they're going to burst okay. and they're going to get a little bit crispy. That oil then becomes the oil of our vinaigrette, vinaigrette. or salsa, okay. whatever you want to call it. So I've got capers so much oil going in there. That? How fun is that sound? Ooh. About a quarter cup okay. and they are definitely sizzling. Yes. These avocado oil? I did. I used pure avocado oil. And so, do you like capers? It depends. If it's, if it's too much, um, I, I don't tend to like them, but I think when they're kind of blended in, like like they're going to be kind of in the salsa, I kind of, if they're not the main event, okay, if they're I'm just with kind you of there. in something, um, I don't notice them as much. Yeah. Because they're just, I just didn't tend to find they're very salty. Right. And um, I also like them when they're tamped down a little bit mm -hmm. in a dish that has a lot of fat. Right. So um, a chicken piccata that's uh, got that heavy cream and butter and all right, of that. Right, Those right. Capers in there, I, I really dig. But capers just thrown on top of a salad or something like that, I'm, I'm with yeah, you. It's, it's a, a little it's much a little for strange, me. Yeah. Um, but this dish has lots of fat from the vinaigrette and um, and then these capers are actually taken down a notch by doing exactly what we're doing. Okay. So we need those to sizzle a little bit more and I'm going to reach down and adjust my heat on my oven. 
So those do their thing. We need that zest of that lemon to add to this. That in the inside. Okay. So we actually drain these off and we let the oil cool mm -hmm. and then we add in our other ingredients okay. to, to make our salsa. So once we drain off those capers, what we're gonna add into that oil are currants. So do you have you heard of currants? I've heard of current, but more in like the scent world of like candles and ah, things like that. So I don't really know okay, about. Okay, okay, interesting. It kind of looks like a raisin. Is it kind of in the it's raisin like, family? It, it is. It's a, it's a dried berry, and they're obviously very small. And I just find them a little more elegant than raisins. I don't mind raisins. Yeah. I like dried fruit and lots of things, but they're a little bit more elegant, and they're definitely a different sweetness profile. So to me, a raisin has a very specific sweetness, like definition. Right. And when, to me, raisins just make a statement. Like I am a recipe that has raisins in it. And <laughs> I'm pro raisin, like don't get me wrong. Um, but a current just to me has less of that overarching um, command on a recipe. Okay. So that's why, and currants are prolific in that part of the world. Right. So that's why they're using them. Using, so that makes sense. So these are actually going to soak in the hot oil yeah. and they'll also bloom okay. and get softer mm -hmm. and do their thing. So we've got our is zest. zest? Is that Let's enough? check it out. Yeah, that is perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna get you a little dish to get that zest in. Okay. And then you are gonna make the yogurt sauce. So there goes the zest, and that's not a bad smell. No, I love um, lemon. Yeah, so a zest of a lemon. I wrote a blog post about um, what teaching cooking classes here has taught me, mm -hmm. and like, and you know how everything now is like five tips to you yeah, know, creating the like a, yeah. three tips, seven tips. Yeah, yeah and, and everything's like. And a sometimes super quick it's six tip. or four. I like odd numbers. I actually think I did six. I can't remember. But yeah. one of the things <laughs> that co teaching cooking classes here taught me is that we're going to need more lemons. Yes. We buy a sack of lemons every week, oh and we use them all. They are just this thing that can instantly brighten something. It happened last night in the cocktails, curries, and cookies class. Mm -hmm. So we did a crawfish boil curry. We put all of the components of a crawfish boil in a curry. New so potatoes, <laughs> crawfish, corn, corn. and um, we de it's definitely a westernized version of curry. We did heavy cream to finish it off. And um, whatever, for whatever reason, whatever was going on with our vegetables, might have been going on with the crawfish, mm -hmm. just something wasn't right in the end, and we squeezed in. A lemon. Well, think about it. In crawfish boils, a lot of people. Yeah, put and there's in lemons and crawfish boils. So, so yeah. we didn't, we didn't steer from the theme. I was about to say it, it was on theme. Yeah, so it was. It was yeah. okay to put that lemon. Yeah, in there. so really good. Okay, so you need a good pinch of salt in here. So this is unflavored, full fat yogurt. I, this is Greek yogurt. You could use just full fat yogurt, um, but definitely no low fat and or vanilla or anything like that. So she put a good pinch of salt in here. I'd say probably half a teaspoon and then you are going to squeeze in we need a tablespoon of lemon okay. a lemon about this size is good and it's pretty squishy i can tell it's juicy this is going to get you about two tablespoons of lemon if you're super concerned you can always measure it mm -hmm. but generally a, a lemon that size you're going to get about two tablespoons we need one tablespoon in the so yogurt we do about a half. yeah we'll do half and we'll we'll save this for something else so <laughs> I was saying before that I wasn't sure how to use the So how would squeezer. you have loaded that guy up? Well, normally I would just squeeze it and I use my hand. Right, to catch the seeds, catch and the that's seeds. totally fine. I, I thought it would be, you would put it face down like this. You act, you're act. you right, yeah. And then squeeze it that way? So a lot of folks, no, that's wrong, that's no. wrong. So <laughs> it, it fits, so it totally fits okay. like that, right? right? That's wrong. So you actually want to go this way. The other way, okay. So you're... Pressing this. Because it seems like you would want it, like, because a regular lemon squeezer, you push the inside, you know, against it to squeeze the lemon out. So it right. seems like you would want it to squeeze that way. Yeah. But. Yeah. So we use this in cooking classes a lot. We have these, uh, a bunch of these, and pe folks love them. They, they really dig this tool. And 90% of the people put it in wrong, and then there's lemon juice flying everywhere, and someone's <laughs> going to get lemon in their eye, right. and then all the fun is over. <laughs> um, so it actually goes in like this. And as you're pushing this, you're going to invert that whole lemon. Okay, so it's going to yeah. okay, flip it and inside out. And then this thing's going to catch the seeds. Gotcha. So um, go ahead and press that in. 
I've been working out just for this. There you go. Perfect, perfect. Ah, that makes so much more sense. Okay. <laughs> so all of that juice is out of there, seeds are caught, and all is good. So you're gonna stir that, and that's gonna behave as if it's not gonna wanna come together. And mm -hmm. it's gonna almost, it might even look kinda curdly for a minute. Right. But you're just gonna keep stirring, 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 and it's gonna incorporate it, and it's gonna make it super smooth, mm -hmm. and it's gonna take it down from that yogurt texture to just a little bit thinner. Right, like kinda um, a sauce. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the base of the cauliflower that we're going to um, oh, then we'll layer. Under, underneath the yep. cauliflower, like on the plate? Yep. So we're making essentially a dip that you assemble on a platter. Mm -hmm. So if you think of seven layer dip with beans and then all the other things, kind of a similar thing where you, that base is the yogurt and then the cauliflower goes on top and then we do the salsa, the salsa on top. over it. Okay. Delicious. So I'm going to get these capers out into a bowl and. We are gonna move on to making this salsa. So here come the capers. So those smell divine. Yeah, they do smell good. They look larger because they- I'm be changing my mind on capers. Right, right. So they um, have plumped up and they're a little brown and they've uh, burst open. Right, I can see there's a split. And all of that goodness is now in this oil in the pot where that we're going to use that's perfect that's that beautiful good? and smooth all right make sure josh gets that because we want to make sure we get to that <laughs> consistency <laughs> at this point now that the capers have been sizzling and they burst and we can smell what do you smell i smell the vinegar yeah yeah that the, what's that capers? brininess right. yeah. yeah so at this point if you notice that you don't have quite enough oil in there, you can always add more oil. Okay. But now we're gonna start building this vinaigrette. So what I need you to do is add in the currants okay. and a tablespoon of crushed red pepper while okay. I get this parsley chopped. And then you're gonna stir, and the little bit of heat that's left over is going to help plump those currants. So we've got crushed red pepper going in, do you know how to cut parsley, chop parsley? There's no uh, magic. I was about to say, if it's just you yeah. know, straightforward chopping, I think I can do it. So you just go over, push it back in a pile, go over it again, keep pushing it in a pile. Keep going. Yeah. And you like to leave in the stems as well? Or I you? did, yeah. Um, for something like this, I do. I think um, it gives it a little bit of extra flavor. Yeah, or? and this is a very young parsley, mm -hmm. so the stems aren't offensive to me, gotcha. but yeah. All right, so we've got Oh, that is so pretty. So we've got the currants in there, and now we need our walnuts, okay. lemon zest, and then the parsley is going to go in, and that is going to be our vinaigrette for our cauliflower. And then the walnuts, you kind of chopped a little bit, did a rough chop. So I chopped them and I roasted them. You can okay. do it in a dry skillet on the stovetop or in the oven. And when you're roasting the walnuts, or really any nut, a lot of folks want to go into a high heat oven, get color on them, mm -hmm. and they certainly look like roasted nuts, but the you're meat the zest, sorry zest goes in. Yes. The meat on the inside hasn't cooked yet. So you actually want to kind of go in a low oven. Okay. So I go a fairly moderate oven, like maybe 275, 300. It takes a little bit longer, um, but that way you know you've cooked the nut all the way from the inside out. And then we're also adding um, a tablespoon of the white balsamic. We need a tablespoon vinegar. of white balsamic. Okay. But come on. What? Yeah, that looks pretty. That is so gorgeous. Okay. So we're going to set that aside. And then we are going to take a peek at this cauliflower to see how we did. It's been roasting away. So that's where you want incredibly high heat. So I roasted at 450 degrees. The joke that I say is that 350 degrees is a bill of goods Betty Crocker sold us for cakes. <laughs> okay. And that many, many other things need to be at, at a, a very, heat. very high yeah. heat. So we we're at 450, and I think that was a really good idea because. And how long do you think it takes? These at were 15 minutes. Okay. Um, and oh, wow. y'all. Come on. Yeah, I'm like looking at particular at this one that I want to eat. Isn't I that love gorgeous? That 
So take your knife so and make sure we can easily pierce that cauliflower. Um, it could have a little bit of bite to it, but we want it to be, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. tender. Super tender. Okay. Looks good. So we need these to cool just for a minute okay. and then we're gonna start assembling our platter. Okay, so I'm gonna get you a platter because we're ready to assemble. Okay. So I need you to get that yogurt sauce spread over. Spread it out. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make kind of like um, waves okay. of yogurt sauce so that then we can layer on the cauliflower. There you go. And usually yogurt, they use yogurt in dishes when it's kind of a little spicy. Yeah, when things are a little too that, spicy, it helps. Bring that heat down. Yeah, it helps with the heat level for sure. Oh, and um, I've got the naan in the oven. Okay. So, because we want to have big pieces of naan to be able to d dip this. But that is gorgeous. And you use all of, all of all the All of it, all of it. Get it all oh, on there. All on yeah. There? All right. There we go. So nice, and also the tanginess, all the different right. flavors, the and tanginess. The lemon in there mm -hmm. is gonna be yep. really good with Oh, everything. good job. All right. Could you see yourself making this oh, for yeah, friends? Absolutely. Okay, so we've got I the like cauliflower. This would be like a really good kind of appetizer too. Oh, for something sure. Something for everybody to share. Yeah, yeah. But with all that's going on here for ve um, vegetarians, mm -hmm. um, this is very, very um, solid, sustaining. Right. You know, um, lots of protein, mm -hmm. lots of good stuff going on here. Yeah, I think you could definitely have it as a full meal as well. For sure. Especially with the naan, kind of gives it a, yeah. little, a little bit of extra. All right, so let's get all this cauliflower on here. Love all the little kind of burnt crispies on the oh, side. Well, the I'm just being polite because <laughs> you're here, but normally, I was about to say, normally, normally I'd be no one those. knows those exist. Yeah. Um, I would be doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's all the goodness right there. All right, so are you ready to get that vinaigrette I over am the top? Ready. And I could see I was where he say I love the colors in the vinaigrette. It's gorgeous. It's, like the green from the parsley, the red from the red pepper flakes. Yeah, the like nice the pop current. from the red pepper flakes for sure. It looks really pretty. I love, yeah. I love when food has lots of different colors. Yeah. In. So we get that kind of off. You know what? I on. say pour. pour. I say just start, start pouring. because you're not going to make it look a little pretty. You're not going to leave any of that behind. All right. And if we, you could hit it with a little extra olive oil, a little drizzle of olive oil if you wanted to, oh or God. balsamic, but what? Yeah, this is ridiculous. So gorgeous. Oh, that looks so good. All right, I'm look. I'm gonna <laughs> grab some naan. If you would clear all of that, I'm gonna yeah. grab some naan, and we're gonna invite these folks who are behind the scenes to come and dig in with us. Here we are. This is our ca roasted cauliflower with yogurt sauce and oh, that, so that nice tangy, spicy vinaigrette that goes on top. And I guess it moved it away from us. Yeah. We should get a bite. Here, I'll move it back. I was going to say, do we need it? Here we come. That's a little hot. Let's see. I don't know if we needed this to help with the cauliflower. Maybe a spoon? Yeah, I couldn't mm. get that on there. There we go. Sorry. Oh my goodness. I have bad manners. <laughs> All right, make sure you get all of that. All in one bite. Mm. Is it good? I Stop it. it. So good. Oh my gosh. Tangy, a little bit spicy. Yogurt helps cool it off. Mm -hmm. Naan helps as well. I like the crunchy from the walnuts. Really, really good. Very Great job, good. Sarah. Thanks. This I was mean, fun. I know I did it all myself. Now all we have to do is invite <laughs> folks over. That's right. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening.